There are lots of functions that grow and grow and grow, but not all growth to infinity is the same. We can distinguish between different types of growth. So let's play a game. Who wins the following contest? Let's say we have two functions which grow to infinity. Which one gets there first? Which one grows faster? In our first matchup this evening, we have exponential growth versus polynomial growth. By which I mean, let's take two specific functions. Let's say e to the x and x to the n for some positive integer n. Which of these gets to infinity fastest? Well, it seems kind of obvious that e to the x grows much faster than x to the n for any value of n. But how do you quantify that? How do you make that more precise? It's not enough simply to note that e to the x is bigger than x to the n. I want richer information than that. So let's do the following. Informed by what we learned in the previous chapter, let us consider the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the n divided by e to the x. Let's take the ratio of these two functions and see how that behaves as x goes to infinity. This is like a, a ratio test, if you will. Now, of course, in order to evaluate this improper limit, we're going to use L'Hopital's rule. That's going to give us what? The limit as x goes to infinity of the ratios of the derivatives. So in the numerator, we have the derivative of x to the n, which is n times x to the n minus 1. In the denominator, we have e to the x. Now, this, of course, is still improper. It's still giving you infinity over infinity unless n is equal to 1. So what do we do? We know what to do with L'Hopital. We repeat and we keep differentiating until that polynomial in the numerator is exhausted the denominator remains fixed. And so after a certain number of inductive steps, we get the limit as x goes to infinity of what? n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. Aha, we're going to get n factorial times x to the 0 divided by e to the x. The numerator is a constant. The denominator goes to infinity. This gives us a limit of 0. And what that means is that exponential growth dominates polynomial growth. That e to the x is going to infinity oh so much faster than any polynomial grows to infinity. That is satisfying, but maybe not so much. You might say, wait a minute, what if that exponent in the polynomial is not a positive integer? What if it's fractional. What if we've got some other constants floating around in the exponents? Well, let's consider that. Look at the limit as x goes to infinity of, in the numerator, some constant times x to the alpha divided by some other constant times e to the beta x. And here, let's assume that those exponents, those constants, alpha and beta, are positive numbers, but not necessarily integers. Then, what are we going to do? Well, those constants, a, b, out in front, those are just constants. I can pull them out of the limit. Let's just toss it into a generic constant, capital C. And then we have the limit as x goes to infinity of what? I'm going to use L'Hopital, take the derivative of the numerator. That's going to give me what? Alpha times x to the alpha minus 1. But that alpha, it's a constant. I'm going to pull it out, toss it in with that C. What do I get down below? The derivative of e to the beta x is beta times e to the beta x. Pull that constant beta out front. What do we notice? What we notice is that the denominator has not changed. It's still e to the beta x. The numerator has had its exponent decrease by 1. That means we can use this same inductive approach of exhausting the numerator until after the right amount of derivatives, we get a numerator that is either a constant or something that is going to zero. As x goes to infinity, that means our answer again is zero. Exponential growth always, always dominates polynomial growth. 
Now, what I want you to notice, this will be important later, is just how little all of these constants matter. We don't really care about the constants in front, the constants in the exponents, none of it. It's just the type of growth that you have that matters. All right, well, that was fun, but let's keep going. It's time for another matchup. In this quarter, polynomial growth versus logarithmic growth. Two functions enter the limit. Only one survives. Ahem, <clears throat> well... How do we do that? Well, we've already kind of done that. In the previous chapter, recall we practiced our L'Hopital's rule by looking at what happens to the ratio between log of x and square root of x. That was one where it was really not obvious who was going to win, but with some work, we showed that the square root of x dominated the natural log of x. That is a foreshadowing of the deeper truth that polynomial growth always dominates logarithmic growth. Let's follow the same pattern doing what we did for the previous matchup. Let's look at the limit as x goes to infinity of the ratio between log of x to some power, alpha, and x to the beta. Here these exponents, alpha, beta, are assumed to be positive numbers, though not necessarily integers. So, proceeding as before, we compute the limit as x goes to infinity of what? We're going to have some generic constant c sitting out front to absorb what happens when we take derivatives. What's the derivative of the numerator? The derivative of log of x to the alpha is alpha times log of x to the alpha minus 1. I'm going to pull that alpha out front to that constant c. Oh, almost forgot. Chain rule. I have to multiply this by the derivative of log of x, which is 1 over x. So I'll put that downstairs. In the denominator, the derivative of x to the beta is beta, tossed out front, times x to the beta minus 1. And now we see there's a little bit of algebraic simplification that gives us in the end this constant c times the limit as x goes to infinity of the ratio between log of x to the alpha minus 1 and x to the beta. So the denominator remains the same. The numerator has decreased its power by 1. And so using the same inductive argument as before, we keep going, we keep applying L'Hopital's rule, we keep differentiating until we've exhausted all those powers of log of x, in the end leading to a numerator that goes either to a constant or to zero, whereas the denominator is going to infinity. That means the limit of the ratio is zero. That means polynomial growth always dominates logarithmic growth, independent of what constants we're using. So that means I could take log of x to the 1,000th power. Wow, that's kind of big. But as compared to the fifth root of x, oh no. That polynomial growth is absolutely going to dominate that logarithmic growth in the limit. That's a really powerful application of L'Hopital's rule that's telling us something deep about different types of growth.